missionary stories. We're so thankful that you tuned in. We have another exciting lesson and this is a miracle for Samuel Lito and this is about a little boy from Mexico and how he hears the Word of God for the very first time and we're going to get so excited when we find out about this little boy and there is a blind man that is sitting beside of him. So we're going to learn about what it is to be spiritually blind and what it is to be physically blind in these lessons. So we're going to be reading from John. In John chapter 9, we see where Jesus healed a blind man. And this is something that is for every person in the world because this world is in darkness. And we're going to see that in these lessons. So we're going to be reading some of chapter 9, not all of it right now, but we will in the next two weeks. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day, for night cometh when no man can work. You see, we must be busy for the Lord today because we have no hope of tomorrow. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which it is interpretation means sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came sin. We see the power of Christ in this lesson. So we can understand that Christ knew what this man needed, the man's faith and obedience. By obeying what God's Word said, he went and saw. By faith is what healed him. And the Spirit of God was working in the power of God. We can see this all the time in the lessons of the miracles which Christ did. This is a miracle. And that's what we have with Samuel Lito. We are going to see a miracle for this young boy. Now we see miracles every day when a soul comes to Christ. That is the greatest miracle of anything that can happen. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we truly rejoice in thy great love. We thank thee for eternal life. We thank thee that we have been brought out of darkness into light, out of the power of Satan unto thee. And for every person that is listening today, we pray that each one will come to know thee as personal Savior and that they can know from the Word of God that they are a child of God and they have assurance of eternal life through faith in Christ. And for those that are truly thine, help each to realize that we must be busy for the Lord, getting out the Word of God, doing all that we can to reach souls for Christ. Save this city and thank thee for hearing and answering our prayers. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. So here we have a little boy that shines shoes. Now he's nine years old, and you must understand that he is working so he can go to school. This little boy has never 
ever been to school because there is not a school in his village. The blind man is sitting here waiting for the people to come. They are seated by a lunchroom. He is waiting for the men to come so he can shine their shoes. He has his little shoe box and the blind man is waiting to sing. He has a guitar. He has his little box where they can give money. So he's waiting for them to come to give him money because he's blind and can't work. So while he's sitting here, he, he is waiting for the bus to come. Now remember, this is a dusty road and he was waiting to watch the blind man. You see, the blind man sees with his ears. And when Samuel Leto would watch him, he would, when he heard the bus coming, he could hear before Samuel Leto heard the bus. So he would straighten up in his chair, tune his guitar, and get his little box out for people to give money to him. So when the people got off the bus, the first thing Samuel Leto did was to go and he said, shine, mister, shine, mister. And he was proud of his work because he was a good worker. And this day, as he's seeing the people get off, going into the lunchroom, and then there were people coming back out of the lunchroom when the bus was ready to leave, and he would watch their shoes. He looked at their shoes and he was so proud that he had shined their shoes and they were bright and shiny. And of course, the blind man was seated there and they gave him money. Everyone feels sorry for a blind person. And we are to feel the same way for those that are spiritually blind. We must have love for those that are down and out. Those are the ones that we're to reach. Those are the ones that need Christ. They need our love. So this day he watched and there was a lady that got off and she said good day to him. Well, he liked her because she had shiny hair and she had beautiful smile and her teeth were white. And as she said good day to him and had a beautiful smile, he liked her right away. So after the other people had gotten off the bus, the bus driver went to the back of the bus and got her luggage. And he thought, where is she going to be staying? This is unusual. So he was watching to see what she did with her luggage and they sat it there by the lunchroom. And when he was watching the bus and and all the people getting on and the people going and coming on the bus. He was so excited because he didn't have to push the other people away like they did in the big cities. He was the only shoe shine boy in the village. So this was exciting for him. And he knew that when he made money that it was to be saved to put in his school crock for him to go to school in the big city. So after everybody had gotten off the bus and gone in, she, and she saw how he was working and shining shoes, she said, you are not a lazy boy. Well, this made him feel good because she saw that his work was appreciated by someone else. And then she said to him, what are you going to do with your money and what is your name? And he said, I am saving my money. And when I get enough money, I'm going to go to school so I can learn many things. And she, he said, my name is Samuel Lito. So she said, well, I have something to tell you that you can learn right now. And it's the most important thing that you can learn. And it is for everyone in the whole world. Well, he saw a black book in her under her arm. And then he saw that she had another book under her arm. And he became suspicious right away. He thought, I am not going to use my money to buy that black book or the other book that she has in her hands. 
and she said, and this is something that you can learn. And she said, have you heard of the Bible? The Bible is God's word. Oh yes, I have heard of the Bible, but the Bible is not for me. When I learn to read, I'm going to learn to read many books, but the Bible, no. Well, she said, I have another book here that you would like to, if you would like to listen, I can tell you a story and it has no pictures and it has no words, but it's a true story from the Bible. Well, how can that be if it has no pictures nor no words? She said, well, let me tell you the first thing. The first thing teaches about the goal page that is in heaven. There are mansions in heaven. And this goal page speaks of the street that is pure gold and the city that is pure gold. And she showed him, told him the Bible verse that went with this. Jesus said, in my father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And she said, that's what this little book tells. It tells about heaven, that the street is pure gold and the city is pure gold. And there are angels in heaven, 10,000 times 10,000s and thousands of angels in heaven. And Jesus is in heaven. And you see, he has, this is the visualized wordless book, and she's telling him that he's in heaven, he has a glorified body, and he has nail prints in his hands where he died on the cross for our sins. And then she told him the things that are not going to be in heaven. And he couldn't believe this. He, there is not going to be any sin in heaven. Sin cannot enter heaven. And there's not going to be any more tears, no more medicine, no more sun or moon, because the glory of God is going to lighten all of heaven. And no more deaths. And then she, he, she said, and then you can know that you are a child of God, but everybody's not going to this place. Everyone is not going to heaven because you see, if sin cannot enter there, you must know how to get rid of your sin. Because you see, God's word says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, every one of you that's listening today, if you don't know these Bible verses, you need to write them down and learn them. This is important that you know the Bible verses. Romans 3, 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, you can use this little book but you need to know the words that you can find in the Bible. First of all, this little book, a child can learn this and tell others how to get to heaven just by the colors. But as you teach it, you are to teach the children the Bible verses that go with it. So this is very important that you learn these. And then he, she said, all have sinned, like stealing, and lying is sin. He says, everyone does those things. She said, yes, but it must be forgiven and cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's what the red page stands for, the blood of Christ that cleanses us from all sin. You see, these little books, we have given over 14,000 away we have ladies that are in a retirement home that makes these little wordless books for us and they are free, completely free. And this is why we want every person to know these truths. And then she told him this was the good news. Now, those of you that know what good news is, that's why we call our program Good News Program because the gospel means good news. She told him that 
Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. This is the gospel. This means good news. Well, he had never heard this before. He couldn't believe that these were true from God's word. And he was getting excited. And she said, Christ came from heaven. He was in heaven. And he came from heaven to go to the cross to die for your sin and my sin. That's why we call it the good news. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. 1 John 1, 7b. And then we have 1 Ephesians 1, 7. In Christ, we have redemption through his blood. Well, this boy was getting so excited. He was believing everything she said. And he was so excited because she said, now you can have your sins forgiven and then you have your sins have been cleansed and you are washed as white as snow. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Psalm 51, 7, because it tells us in God's word that sin and darkness go together. Satan is our enemy. His kingdom is a kingdom of darkness. And God's kingdom is a kingdom of light. So, you can be cleansed by the precious blood of Christ. Now, do you want to take this little book and tell me what these colors mean? The white page stands for the righteousness of Christ. And he started to reach out and take the book. She told him all of the truths that we have told you today about the blood and as she told him, each page he kept, oh, it was just, it was so awesome to him that he had never heard this. And let me tell you ladies, and you young people that are listening, there are children in your neighborhood that has never heard these truths. So when he started to reach out and take it, guess what? There's always an enemy. The blind man said, don't take that book. Your parents will be angry because you are listening to this lady. She is an evangelist. That is a missionary. And these words are not true. Oh, he listened to the blind man and he went over and sat back down and didn't take the wordless book. And he remembered, this child hadn't even been to school, and he remembered all that she had told him. So he sat down and he watched to see what this lady was going to do. All of a sudden, a car came and picked her up. And he recognized these people. These are the missionaries that's been to his village. And they have even climbed up the hill where he lives into the houses. And they couldn't drive a car because he lived straight up a hill and the road was too narrow. And they had been to his house, but his father wouldn't let them in. So he saw and they said to her, oh, we're sorry that we're late. You see, sometimes being late is God's plan and purpose for you. If you're in a traffic jam and you're wanting to get where you're going, ask God what he has for you. He has a plan and purpose in that. This little boy would have never heard had he, she not been late and he was there right when God wanted him to be. Are you missing opportunities to give out God's word if you are, you must begin right now to give out the Word of God. So after she was gone, he went up the hill to his house. Oh, this boy was so excited. He was thinking about everything she had told him. And she had told him that when death comes, 
that you're absent from the body and present with the Lord. When death comes, you just go to heaven where this beautiful place is that God has prepared for you. Well, he wanted to tell his mother and father, but he walked in and his father was so glad to see him. And he said, we waited for you to come so you could eat with us because your father is supposed to eat with his son. He gave his mother a hug and he patted his little sister on the head. And she said, how much did you make today? And he said, oh, you're going to be so excited. And his father said, my macho boy, he is a good worker. After they were finished and cleaned off the table, straightened the house back up, he laid down all that he had. He had gotten so much money that day that they all clapped their hands. He went outside. They went out after they had eaten and watching the moon. And he saw those beautiful stars up there. And his father was talking about how soon he must fill his crock so he could go to school. He wasn't interested in this at all this night. He was thinking about that moon and thinking about his father wouldn't go to heaven, his mother wouldn't go to heaven, or his sister wouldn't go to heaven, or the blind man wouldn't go to heaven, and neither would I go to heaven. And heaven is above that moon that we see. In his heart, he wanted to tell his father, but this was a secret that he couldn't tell anyone yet. Oh, and then after his father said, well, tomorrow you and your little sister will go to find lizards. They sold lizards on the road for people to eat. And I will go and sell my pigs. And by the time we sell that and you make your money, now you children that's listening, remember he has to work before he can even start school. What do you do for your parents? What do you do to help in your education? What do you do to help your neighbors? You, as a child of God, must tell others about Christ. If you are obedient to Him, you must serve Him. So, he, after they went to bed, he couldn't go to bed. After everybody, they told him he had to go to bed early because he had to get up. So here this little boy is sitting here, and he's thinking, this lady could not be bad. This lady had to be telling the truth because I try to forget it, and I can't. I can't forget what she taught me. Oh, but I will never see her again. She will never walk up to the top of this hill. I, maybe I should just forget it, but I can't forget it. Now I want to go to school even more so that I can read the Bible. So I can find out if these things were true. As he sat there, he kept thinking, I know that this is a good woman. I know that what she is telling is truth. He had no idea what was going to happen to him as this little boy was sitting there thinking about Christ. So the next morning, his father went out. His father went to sell the pigs. And he was thinking, oh, I wish I could have gone with my father this time. Because when he went with him before to sell the pigs, here's what happens. They tie the pig's legs, hind legs, take them to market, put them up on a platform, and the ropes would get, get tangled around the pigs, and he couldn't handle the pigs, and they would get the rope around his legs, and nothing he did. The pigs were squilling, and he couldn't do anything with these pigs. Well, he was laughing about it now because he said he remembered when his father, he had gone with his father 
And when they had bought the pigs, he kicked the pigs off the platform. And he laughed and he said, oh, this isn't being cruel to pigs. They don't matter. Only the money that we get from them is all that matters because I need the money to go to school. So as he got up the next morning, him and his mother were drinking coffee and eating tortillas. And what they had for lunch was brown, red brown beans, and they used the tortillas to get the beans up. And oh, how he loved those. And he loved his black coffee in the morning. And he loved those warm tortillas that his mother made. And then as they were talking, she told him that him and his little sister must go out to find these lizards. And then he must come home and go and shine shoes. And this little boy loved working. Now, how many of you children love to do your chores. This little boy did. He loved to do his chores and he loved to make the money for his school. Now, what are we learning from these lessons? We're learning about this blind man, how he caused this child not to take the little wordless book in his hand. He said it was not true. Well, we see how this blind man, now listen at this, this is an absolute wonderful story. The neighbors, when they saw this blind man, had seen him that was blind and said, Is not this he that sat and begged, just like this blind man? Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes opened? He answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said unto me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and I received my sight. Then said they unto him, where is he? He said, I know not. They brought him to the Pharisees and before the, that he was and the one that had been blind. And it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, He put clay on mine eyes, and I washed and do see. How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was division among them. You see, the Holy Spirit unites there was division. If you're a child of God, you cannot have division in the body of Christ. We're going to find out more about Samuel Leto next week. I hope you tune in. Missionary every day Tell the world that Jesus is the way Be it in the town or country Or the busy avenue Africa or Asia, the task is up to you. Be a missionary every day. Tell the world that Jesus is the way. The Lord is soon returning.